All right, so in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and start by troubleshooting the Franklin Electric QD control boxes. The QD control boxes are standard from one third through one horsepower, so there's tons of them out there. Um, and basically what we wanna do is share with you some money-saving tips that are gonna help you to troubleshoot and diagnose problems with your system to basically minimize your expenses in maintenance and repair. Uh, before we get started though, I do wanna remind everybody we are working with live electricity, uh, so use extreme caution when working with electricity, and if you cannot complete any of these tests with 100% confidence in your safety, I recommend you call a professional. In case you didn't catch the previous videos in this particular series, this uh, video series is dedicated to troubleshooting a whole, uh, the whole range of components in a well system. Uh, we started by just going over a general overview in this series and then we went through and performed various tests along the way uh, depending on what kind of conditions that you're experiencing. So if you have any questions about uh, things not relating to the control box but perhaps components in the system, so go ahead and check out those previous videos in the series. We hope you find something useful. And to make this video extra exciting, we went ahead and picked up an $18 meter in order to show you that under almost any budget, you can perform these tests. All right, so the first thing we want to do is uh, when we're troubleshooting a QD control box is uh, make sure that we remove the control box. And then we've got just the terminal strips where your wires are landed, and that'll come into play a little bit later in the video when we talk about testing the voltage. But at this point, we're just going to test the components inside of the QD control panel. So we're going to go over to the workbench. All right, so we've got our QD control box pulled off of the wall. We're over here. I've got the meter ready to go. Uh, I've got all the components here. So the first thing that we're gonna test is the capacitor inside this panel. Um, so to do that, we'll wanna first uh, disconnect it uh, from the connections here. Now that we've got these wires taken off and moved out of the way, we're gonna take the meter and go ahead and put it on either side of this. And what we're looking for is the, uh, the number to essentially go towards zero and then swing uh, or slowly climb back up. So it's negative actually in this particular case. And it's starting to climb. And it will continue to climb as long as I hold it here, essentially until we reach infinity. So in this particular example, this capacitor has a great degree of capacitance, indicating to us that it's good because it's, it's acting exactly as what we're expecting here. So that number continues to climb. So it looks like we're in good shape on the capacitor here. Um, so what we need to do next is test the relay. And to test the relay, well, we've got a couple of tests in mind. We're going to test the triac and the coil. Alright, so now that we've tested our capacitor and everything looks great, I'm going to go ahead and just put this back together here real quickly. Now, another thing to be aware of, capacitors can hold a charge similar to the way a battery does. So you don't want to necessarily mess with those terminals by hand because they'll bite you. I've been bitten before by capacitors. Um, so we're going to now take all of the points off of the relay so that we can then test that. So we'll just pull all these off here. Oh, that's all right. And get that out of the way. All right, so this relay, it has uh, a CAP, that stands for cap, and then you've got a, a B and an L1. So uh, the L1 goes down to the interface that actually goes with the L1 back in the panel. Um, so anyways, the relay test is, is pretty straightforward. I've got my meter set to 2K ohms right now. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and check is what's known as the triac test. Uh, and uh, as we mentioned with the triac, it basically engages and disengages the start capacitor uh, during startup. So the triac test consists of uh, taking the ohm meter and hooking it to the cap and B terminals. And the reading that we're looking for is infinity. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay. 
and you can see the meter didn't move an inch so we got infinity because if we were to short this out that meter goes to zero so when they're not touching that's representative of infinity now in an inexpensive meter like this you can't really expect it to show you infinity so this is essentially the format that they use so zero resistance infinity resistance so our check tests out really good now we'll go ahead and perform the second test that's the coil test and the coil is um, basically from L1 to B and we're, what we're looking for in this one is complete continuity because uh, the black being the, the um, main winding just basically travels straight through this at all times so you should have a strong connection here and it should go right to zero or close to yeah see we're bouncing right at zero so that tells us that this relay is in good shape and now one thing that I also wanted to kind of point out to you guys um, we've avoided using the more expensive meters like uh, fluke meters just because I wanted to show people on a budget um, how they can troubleshoot their system but there is a secondary test that you can do uh, that is out of the range of this particular meter um, and that would be testing the microfarad rating of the capacitor itself uh, so this meter this is a fluke meter it does have the ability to test the microfarads uh, the microfarad rating in this capacitor and it's written on the side here is between 86 and 103 so when we put the meter on at that rating then we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get this here if I can hold the meter and perform the test at the same time now that's the hard part all right so if we're supposed to be between 86 and 103 and an ideal situation you're somewhere in the middle I would say that we're in pretty good shape all right now that we've gone ahead and tested the components within the control panel we'll transition to performing our voltage and amperage tests both with the motor running and as well as just checking the voltage in the panel to ensure that it's getting the proper power that it needs all right so now we're going to perform the voltage check at the pressure switch and uh, what we what we're looking for here is when the pump actually turns on the voltage is expected to drop just slightly and then pick back up to what we're used to seeing so we're going to test that here now all right so as you can see from that test there uh, the voltage did drop uh, pretty close to uh, below 200 and then it spiked back up uh, which is totally normal that's exactly what we're expecting expecting and looking for on this particular test all right so we've got our meter set up over here um, now that we've gone through and tested all of the various components uh, assuming the problem persists we're going to go ahead and perform the voltage and amperage tests so the first thing we're going to do is verify that voltage is getting through to the control panel so what we've done in this situation is we do have the breaker on so I want to remind everybody we are working with live electricity here so use extreme caution uh, but what we're wanting to do is verify voltage is getting through to the panel so I went ahead and drained off some pressure to the system so that the contacts and the pressure switch would close thus allowing the, the electricity to travel up to this panel here so I put my uh, meter on L1 and L2 and we can see over there that the voltage is reading about 247 so that is great that's exactly where we want to be we've got sufficient voltage getting through to the panel so now what we need to do is throw the face back on uh, this panel here and let the pump run and we'll go ahead and take an amp reading on this pump Seven point seven point eight or so. And about six point one, six point four. And we go over here. Six point eight, which matches and about seven or so. So we're good. Good to go. 
All right, so now that we've gone through the amperage test, the voltage test, and went through and tested all the individual components within the QD panel, it's safe to say that our problem is not here. Um, and basically that just leaves us with test testing the components down the well. So in the next video, uh, well after the next video, because we're doing the standard control box next, but after that, we're gonna go ahead and test down the well components, including ohming out the motor, checking the resistance on the windings of the motor, and uh, all of that fun stuff. So we'll see you in that video.